Hi everybody, welcome back to Seedlings, the beginner's guide to literally everything homegrown. So today we're harvesting a bunch of Swiss card. Alright, so follow along, have some fun, leave your comments down below, let's talk about it, let's talk about what your spring harvests are, and I'm very eager to see what you have harvesting this spring. Alright, we'll cut it at the very base and allow it to regrow. So there's one leaf over here, as you see. And these are very normal, not large, sweet cast leaves, but as you can see, how beautifully large it has grown. And this is because if you look at the very base, there's a bit of compost that has been added to the base. We just cut them all at the base. And we try to leave the ones at the center because they're still very small. And we cut the ones outside the center. All right, just like that. It's better or more advisable I've found over the years to grow more than one Swiss card tree. And that ensures you get a better harvest. Planting just one means you get very limited Swiss card out of your seed. All right, so more than one does prove to give you a better harvest. And you can cut as needed, of course. You don't have to harvest everything all at once. You cut as needed. Okay, I think we can do just one more. All right, as we're harvesting, I would like you to notice what is around. So there's a potato plant over here and these beans do serve very well to these potato plants providing nutrients of course helping out the leaves so the more leaves we have the better our root is at the bottom it's also planted next to cabbages which does help with getting our cabbage formed very nicely of course this has suffered a bit of damage but your beans are planted next to greens that will appreciate the nutrients though the nitrogen that the beans give back to the soil so let's harvest a bit of beans of course, you try to harvest the ones that are a bit lengthy. And it keeps regrowing. Alright, so the more you harvest, the more you get. That's the key to it. You don't want to keep it on for too long, or your beans just become hard and don't taste so good. Okay, so you keep harvesting as it grows. There's quite a bit of small ones, so you don't want to harvest the small ones. You want to let those grow out a bit. I'm going to show you a bit of small ones like this one over here. You can tell it's still very young and new on this tree. And of course, you want to try to provide some support. So this bean tree, or bush bean rather, seems to be falling. As you can see, it's growing very much like a bush. And everything is here. There's no sort of support, nothing. It's a bush bean plant. Alright. I'm going to leave that one there. I think we've harvested most of the large ones I think there's one more okay we can move on to the next one again just to re-emphasize we've got spinach over here which appreciates the nitrogen that the bush bean plant gives to the to the leafy vegetable our spinach or Swiss card however you want to put it or say it I think it's commercially known as Swiss card or spinach there we go get our nice long ones in there Okay, here's another long one. As you can see, um, bad branches fall off and that's okay. But we keep getting our beans. We don't want to keep it on for too long. Just ensure your soil is damp. So what's left will continue growing. Okay, just a nice tip for the day. A nice way to preserve the beans if you're not going to eat it all for supper is to freeze it. Okay, so you get your beans and you freeze them. So here's another pot or another plant of beans and right next to it is Swiss card. So again, we're talking about um, companion planting here. What grows best next to beans? We maximize that. Alright, so we open our bush bean plant and see if there's any that can be harvested. And we see there's a nice long one over here we just chop it off doesn't matter where you chop it off it will still regrow 
as long as your soil is okay and the plants are still okay there's one that has been wrapped up here just gonna be a bit of a hassle to unwind it unwind it there we go nice and long this is a great adventure for your family for your kids so bring them all out and have them enjoy this activity of harvesting it teaches them the principle of sowing and reaping all right and one more over here so we can just get around right here there's a nice long one second one and lastly I think we can get another two more from it. There we go. One more, one more. Very nice. All right, and before we close it, I'm just gonna go around to the front to show you another method of companion planting that you can have in your garden. So I would harvest these but as you can see the stem isn't my ideal size for these carrots so what I'll do is that I'll gather a bit of soil and I'll then cover it up just like that because it's not yet the size I want it to be yet okay so you can check by removing some soil and seeing is that how big you want it yes or no if it is you can slightly tug it and pull it out but for me, that's not my ideal size, so I cover it back up again. We check another one. Is this your ideal size for carrots? Yes or no? And for me, that's a no, so I'll grab some soil and cover it up. Okay, and you can then check um, if... So here I've done companion planting. Right after, so a month after I've planted these, I've then planted some onions over here. And the onions will deter any insects or pests that want to eat the carrots. Okay, so it's all companion planting here. They're still very young, so you might not see it. So there's spring onion over here. And there's a bit of herbs towards that side for the smell to deter any pests. All right, so there's basil herbs and there's spring onions here. And right at the back, We've got things that don't aren't very fussy, such as radish over there. And that isn't my ideal size for radish. So I'll grab some soil again and cover it up and let it grow a bit more. Okay, that's all you do for root, root crops. They can stay in the ground for however long you want them in the ground if you're not going to eat them all now. All right, let me show you to the front for some more companion planting tips all right back to the front as promised okay here we've got our squash plant okay and a nice key thing is that squash likes to vine out it likes to spread out so as you can see i've let it run across the grass because it will get more space that way it's already compacted this way so we've grown it out this way the squash plant over here we have redirected it all the way out okay into the grass into the field for it to run wild all right and I've tried to do like our three system you know our three system rule where we plant corn squash and there's a bit of beans in the middle all around and this the corn provides shade to our squash our squash covers the ground very nicely for our corn so that water doesn't escape very quickly as corn is very reliant on water and our beans provide very nice nitrogen to both our corn and our um, squash which is heavy feeders so those three together do work very nicely um, beans is at the bottom it is covered by the quite heavy feeding squash plants so you might not see it under here but it is under and there's corn for some shade for our squash plants so that is a bit of companion planting here. All right, so there's a bit of other companion planting. So we've got a bit of a small plant over there and the squash and the squashes that will be growing over here in these spaces, all right, the squashes growing there do provide some shade for any other thing that might be on the ground, all right? So those are just some ideas as to how you can companion plant in your garden.